presentation. Uh, we'll do a little bit of a question time uh, type thing, and you can, I'll ask you a few questions about your investment, and also, again, we'll allow you to ask <coughs> questions as well. I guess, first of all, tell us about what the company is doing in Macedonia, how you came to be there. Well, we produce electronic components. More specifically, we produce capacitors and electronic filters. And for Macedonia, we were looking for a very cost-competitive location to supply Europe. As you all know, electronics are very value-based. You, what you pay for a device and the capabilities you get year after year, they increase. And the selling price comes down, whether it's TVs, phones, cameras, um, many, many devices. So you have to be very, very competitive. Most of our competition is in low-cost labor areas, and most of the innovation is in higher-cost labor areas, and you need to innovate these products very rapidly year after year, and you need to improve the raw material supply chain to stay competitive. So we were looking for a competitive labor cost market to supply Europe as part of our um, three-year strategy and, um, and also a restructuring plan that we were doing in Europe. So we started looking and we, we kind of lo located on or specified six countries that were in Eastern Europe and Southeastern Europe, the Balkan area. We weren't very familiar with Macedonia, but we heard about Macedonia on a, um, on a um, commercial in Germany, and we followed up and called Victor, and that started the whole process. Did it make any difference to you when you were looking at countries in Eastern Europe? Did you give any higher weighting to those in the EU, or did that make any difference? Um, it did not drive, you know, it was a, it's a slight, it's an advantage, right, because uh, mainly from the unknown, but we, we also have an operation in Bulgaria um, that we've been operating there for over 10 years, that's, up, that's in the EU. So we're kind of familiar with the Balkan area to some extent. Um, it's a positive, but it didn't it didn't dominate our decision at all. What were the factors that made Macedonia come out on top? You know, and they've been you know they've been communicated very effectively here today. And I, I must say, listening to all of it, I agree with everything that I've heard. Um, but you know, so you have a very competitive labor market, labor availability, labor low labor inflation. But once you meet. Um, the, the government officials in Macedonia, you understand their strategy, you understand their tactics, and then you go talk to other companies like Johnson Matthew or Johnson Controls, go to the universities, um, talk to people in other companies, then you, you get a chance to validate that what you've heard today is actually true. Um, and we really believe that the government has a good strategy, they're going to be successful, it's going to provide stability going forward in the future, um, and, it, and that personal relationship was the winning factor. I mean, they had the fundamentals. Um, below the marketing, I mean, the marketing is very good and very effective, but there's some there's substance behind it, right? I mean, and we really believe it. So our confidence, the risk versus reward became very clear. The other countries weren't close in our mind to um, from choosing them over Macedonia because of that. It was the personal touch that helped us understand all the aspects that go into such a um, such a decision. Did you have any concerns? Um, yes, I mean, you, you know, you do, you do have some concerns how easy it will be to, to get our goods back into Europe, um, mm -hmm. but we were able to validate that having the, um, having the um, customs inside the zone really makes that, makes that easier. Um, you know, and being in Bulgaria for 10 years definitely helped us because we had some understanding of the Balkan area. Mm -hmm. Bulgaria is not Macedonia. Um, but it gives you some idea. You knew the neighborhood. Yes. Um, but the population really helped. I mean, Bulgaria was in our consideration as well. But where we're located there, um, Macedonia won in terms of labor availability mm -hmm. um, and access. And then all the things that the government was doing for education inside the country, we believe we're going to pay dividends um, in the future. Mm -hmm. Are you located in one of the industrial zones? Yes. The one you scope. And talk to us about the size and scale of your operation there and any plans you have to ramp up. Yes, yeah, so it's a 15 million euro investment for the facility and infrastructure. So right now it's 10 million euro of equipment inside that factory. It's been operational for coming up on one year, about 11 months since we started uh, shipping our product. As of this morning, 205 employees will be 220 by the end of December. 250 by the end of March, mm -hmm. and potentially another 10 to 15 million euro investment over the next year or two. Mm -hmm. And you were happy with your ability to recruit uh, the right kind of skills? Absolutely. Um, and the language skills were very impressive. Like, so we've been able to find, um, we have a lot of operations. We have operations in Sweden, and Finland, and Germany, and Italy, mm -hmm. and also in the UK. So we were able to find people who speak English and German, English and French. 
It's an English name, um, Italian. Um, and they're great for interfacing with customers that are in Germany or customers that are in Italy or in France. Um, so the, English, the language skills were very positive. Um, we've been able to find the right talent for engineers. We've been able to find the right talent for finance, for procurement, for planning, um, for maintenance. Um, so now we have, to, we have to do a lot of training internally because what we produce is very specialized and we have to transfer that knowledge um, to the local staff. We mainly use our expats to do that. Right? We really want the local, we want to use um, local resources to run and manage the plant. We're not 100% there yet, but we try to support them with technical knowledge um, from the other countries to try to make them successful in their new role. You, you mentioned earlier when it came up that you don't have that many expat workers there. Eight. Um, well, they're not really expats. We have eight. We have um, really um, one in the plant that's an expat. Um, um, potentially another one that's, that'll stay there long term, but we have eight to ten people um, that have different skill sets, either from Italy or from Germany or from one of the other countries that will come and stay, you know, stay for a couple months, do specific training, and then they, they kind of rotate in and out as we need different things to be taught to um, the people there. Mm -hmm. But they're um, staying, staying in Macedonia longer term as a, as a true expat, mm -hmm. really only one, and um, will now be two in the next few months. Okay. Has there been anything that surprised you in your experience so far? Um, the personal, the the, per, the speed and the personal touch of the um, of the government, um, you know, is there, you know, as they said, they're very proactive. They're reaching out. If you have a question, you get an answer. Um, if you have an opportunity you want to discuss, you have an open forum to communicate mm -hmm. quickly and effectively. What would be your advice for the government in terms of improvements to the business environment? It, it's overall, it sounds fairly positive, but yes. what, what's the business community asking for? Yes, you know, and, you know it, is, um, it is outside the EU, so, and it is in the Balkans, so we have to, we do a good bit communicating with some of our suppliers to make them feel, um, to make them feel better about shipping goods into the Balkans or into a country that's outside the EU. But I don't know that the government can do anything for us about that. We have to communicate with those. We have to help them understand that they don't have the goods at risk, right? That it will be paid. Um, we, have, we have a few of those discussions with suppliers um, that we have to go through. But I think that's um, to be expected whenever you go into a country outside the EU from supplying to a country inside the EU. Um, again, I don't know that if the, the country can do, they can do any more than what they're already doing. Um, strong work ethic good strategy, good tactics. Um, you can see it in the results. You can see it in the country, companies that have decided to come invest. Mm -hmm. um, we keep doing the right things in the right way and, and good things will happen. Mm -hmm. What advice would you give to other companies who are weighing up Macedonia as an option? Open the conversation with, um, um, with, with, with the government. Just, you know, you have to decide those things on your own. You have to um, decide do you believe those and see enough evidence to believe those. But just start that conversation. Um, if you if you're curious, then then communicate and, and then let the process the process will take care of itself. Okay. I want to see if any of you have any questions. So it's, it's, you know, it's, it's funded from our parent company, Kim Electronics Corporation, from the U.S., right? So it's part of our capital expenditures. So we create a business plan, and then we take it to the board of directors, and we get it approved, and, and that's how we fund you know, the, the legal entities in Europe from the parent company in the U.S. internally. Right. Anyone else? I'm, I'm wondering how many countries are you serving from this facility? Um, well, predominantly for country, but predominantly Europe, about you know 80% is to Europe, but then about 10% is going to Asia, and about 10% is going to, to North America right now, based on the customer base. And then inside Europe, you know, it's predominantly um, Germany will be first, Italy will be second, um, the UK will be third, and then smaller amounts to, um, 
to in Sweden and live it in Finland. Okay. Was it considered an option at all to just serve, <coughs> to put production facilities, say, in Asia and serve Europe, or it was important to we, the company to have a we have, we have and We have locations in um, Asia, we have a location in Indonesia, we have three locations in China. Um, we, we would like to supply our customers locally as much as possible, and with locally supplied raw materials. The supply chain just gets much simpler. Um, so when we, when we can, but absolutely we made a decision, do we increase the investment in Asia and then ship to Europe, or do we supply to Europe? We thought it was very important to supply our European customers somewhere close in Europe. Mm -hmm. It's the best long-term long -term strategy mm -hmm. um, for us. And your view on the transport infrastructure and connectivity? It, it, you know, I think, um, um, I think it, was, it was said earlier, it, it works well. There are procedures to follow. You follow the procedures, and it works well. We can be in the Central Europe. Um, we can be in Germany in two days. So um, you, know, you just understand the rules, do the paperwork, do it right, and everything works like it's supposed to. What kind of expansion do you envision? I mean, I know that you're already hiring more workers, but let's say in, in five years, where, where will this be? It, it, um, it really depends, but we could see, we, we, what we're doing today in Macedonia, we could see a trip. If we're successful, we plan to be. So, from where they are now, does that mean the workforce would hit 600? I don't know, right? Because it's, a, it's more of an efficiency, fully utilizing all the assets that have been put on the property. Mm -hmm. uh, but it could easily, we could easily reach um, 400 employees, 450 employees in, in that house. Mm -hmm. Do you think a place like Macedonia, I think, especially in, in the U.S., it's just not a known market at all? Um, do you think it's under the radar, and are you happy about that? Yeah. Yes, I, you know, I don't know about other um, U.S. Um, U.S. companies too too much. You know, generally, U.S. companies have a hard time doing well in Europe. Mm -hmm. European customers have a hard time doing well in America. Um, it's the same way. Asian companies have a difficult time taking full advantage of the market. When you're in the Americas, we are, for us, we're an American company. We understand the U.S. market very really well. Because we're there, we're on the same clock, same language, same thought process. Um, European companies have great products, right? They clearly could uh, do very well in the American marketplace. It's more difficult um, for some reason. It's just harder to understand how to do business there. When you locate there and you have an operation there, then now that kind of um, kind of takes care of itself. So I do think Macedonia probably in a lot of American companies is not very well known. Um, you know, but all the, again, all they have to do is just make one call, one communication, and that process starts. A lot of good information. A lot of good American companies that want to do more business in Europe. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a, it would be an advantage for Macedonia as well, where they could attract more business um, in Europe. Mm -hmm. Were you able to make use of any investment incentives? Yeah, absolutely. Right. And that also showed, you know, we don't make the decision based on investment incentives, right? They're not the reason to be somewhere. You need to make sure... The labor pool was right, um, you know, and all the other all the other factors, economic stability, um, labor stability, but it shows commitment from the government, you know. So again, they're putting they're putting teeth behind what they're doing, um, and you know, and it's an important factor, right? At the end. But it doesn't dominate the decision. You make sure you're in the right place and you can serve your customers and be successful um, from a cost and value proposition, and then that just kind of starts to seal the deal, right? It makes you makes you want to act, right? Um, but it's a commitment. It shows how serious they are about, about doing this. Okay, thank you. Last chance for questions? Yes, right here. Uh, uh, yeah. The microphone is coming to you. Uh, Joel Bakish, a private investor. I'm still not clear. Um, do goods exported from Macedonia to the European Union, do they have to pay import duty when they come in? Go ahead. But it's Sorry. not part of the European Union. So surely goods exported to the European Union have got to pay import duty when they arrive in... Uh... No. Not, no, not ours, not for the certain, certain, not for the type of product. Um, so if it, for us, if it has a Euro 1 cert certification, then we export them from Macedonia um, to the Czech Republic for one of our hubs that distributes all over Europe. And we do not pay in, you know, export duties on those or import duties on those. Victor, did you want to clarify anything on this, just so everyone understands? The three trade agreement, 
we, we have a full free trade agreement with the European Union, so any goods and services from Macedonia I export in duty and customs free, as long as they meet the Euro 1 certification of origin. There is a 60-40 rule for many of the products, so therefore everything that has enough value added in Macedonia can be exported to any country of the European Union, as well as the wider market that the Prime Minister alluded to at the beginning, without any custom duties. So it wouldn't make a difference whether you are in Macedonia or in an EU member state. So what's the advantage of joining the European Union? <laughs> <laughs> there are many other advantages than just that. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a very British question to ask. <laughs> and by the way, we'll give a, a last few opportunities for questions. And your question might be um, also, I would say, we didn't take questions uh, to Mr. Samak and to Victor. So if you have questions overall about Macedonia that are as yet unresolved, this is your chance to ask before we adjourn for the lunch. Nope. Okay, good. Um, we've told you everything you need to know then, and I'm really happy about that. Uh, first of all, thank you very much, Mr. Willoughby, for your time. Round of applause for him. Please.